So if you are doing any simulation, one of the things that is most used part of your program is the random number generation. Yesterday, somebody was talking about how to improve, how to make that analysis faster. And with another faculty member from some other department. And then somebody mentioned, well, you know, somebody made their simulation and their analysis 10 times faster, not by going to parallel processing, but just looking at the random number generation. Because for every iteration that you're doing, you're probably using hundreds of random numbers. We are calling this little routine many, many times. And that not only can make the simulation faster, but it also can make the simulation bad and good. So the, random num the goodness of the random number generation can change the results. All right. With that, let's look in detail as to how random number generations are done. You probably will never write a random number generator yourself in your life. However, it is important to know how it is done because then you can use them correctly. Okay. And so we are going to teach you how random number generation is done so that you can put the seeds right and you can use it right. Because without that, you will see as we will go through this chapter, lots of people make very common mistakes and get results that are unbelievable. Okay. So we'll talk about desired properties of a good generator, LCZ is the what is most commonly used, linear congruential generators, Tausworthy is another one, and then we will give you a survey of many random number generators, how to select the seed, and then something which are, which are myths about the random number generation. Again, let's redefine the random number. Random number is, all we are doing is uniform number between zero and one. Random variate is another chapter in which we talk about, talk about how to do normal and you know exponential and so on and so forth. Here we are talking about simply uniform 0, 1. And um, so that would be random variate would be coming later, but here this whole chapter is about random number. And here is a very simple random number generator. Xn the nth number is equal to 5 times the previous number plus 1 mod 16. Okay. So you start with, let's say, any number you can start with. Let's say you start with x0 is equal to 5. Put 5 times 5, 25, plus 1, 26, mod 16 is 10. So the x0 is 5, x1 is 10. Now you put 10 here, and you get 5 times 10. 50 plus 1, that will give you x2 is equal to mod 16. So it will give you x2 equal to 3. And so you get 10, 3, and then you put 3, you will get a 0, 1, 16, so on and so forth. And this is the sequence you will get. All right? You can divide all the numbers by 16, and then you get this sequence. These numbers are uniformly distributed between 0 and 1. And if you did not know the formula, they look random. Right? If you know the formula, then you can figure out what the next number would be. If I told you, oh, my number is 0, then you will, if you know the formula, you can tell the next number. Right? So that's why they are called pseudo random, half random. Because they pass the randomness test. But if you know the secret, then they don't. <laughs> right? But it's not that much of a secret, by the way. The When you use your random number generation, you will publish it. Or anybody's random number generator you use, you will know their formula. So this is not for secrecy anything. There is no secrecy here. All you want to do is you want to do it most. So for secrecy, you need different kind of a generators. <clears throat> and those are not covered in this class. Those are covered in the class called network security. All right. In this class, we just cover these generators which are required for simulations and secrecy is not the issue. Randomness is the issue. How it is normal? Uniform, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's another chapter. <laughs> 
So we have several chapters in this simulation thing, and there is a chapter on testing random number generators. There is a chapter on variance. So there are many other chapters. So this is the most important of all the chapters. I thought first I will cover this. Once we are beyond this, then we see what to do next. All right. So there are tests for randomness. And some of them we will do here itself, some simple ones. But anyway, what you have learned in the previous example is several things. First of all, the very first number that you selected is called the seed. You have to supply that number. Okay. And in our case, um, we took the seed of 0 0.625. And then we gave it to the routine. The routine gave us 0 0.1875. Okay. And then it, it continues by itself. You gave 5. So 5 upon 16 by your seed. Oh, because everything is, but the thing is, in the example, when I started this, I told you the formula. I, I told you that we do mod 16, and then we divide by 16 to get 0, 1. Otherwise, the numbers will be between 0 and 16. Actually, 0 and 15 to be exact. Right? And you are not interested in 0 to 16. You are interested in 0 to 1. So you divide everything here by by 16 in this example. If I change everything uh, actually in this equation, in this equation itself I can write. Yes, yeah, the thing is it is difficult to do this in the real arithmetic. This is an integer arithmetic. This is very important. If you do it in the real, then you will lose the randomness <laughs> because you will lose some bits at the end. We don't want to lose any bits here. So this is done with infinite precision. <laughs> okay. Real arithmetic has a precision, right? 32 bit, 16 bit. Here we are doing integer arithmetic. All right. So pseudo random. Deterministic yet would pass the randomness test. Fully random would not be repeatable. The problem we don't use fully random number generators is because if every time you did this thing, a different number came out, then you cannot show that simulation to anybody. You show the simulation, a whole different result comes out. And you don't want that to happen. You want them to have the same result. You know, unless you want to change it. The thing is, you want to repeat. Sometimes you want to do five repetitions. In that case, you want five different results. That should be in your control. But given the same seed, you should get the same result. You can change the seed, you get a different result. So this is fully, so we don't use fully random stuff. And there are two other things. Cycle length and the tail period. Basically, if you start this random number generator, it will go like this. It will go to some value and then it will come back to some value again and then it will just circulate around. So this is called the tail and this is called the cycle. And in this example, if you notice, we started with 10, we ended up with 10 here, and then we ended up with 10 again and so on and so forth, with 5 and all that, right? So what is the tail length? Here the tail length is 0. Right? And the cycle is, well, I mean, sitting here, thing, you know, let's just start with the 5. If you start with 5, you will get 10, and then you will come back to 5. So that 5 is a part of the cycle. And the cycle length here is either 15 or 16. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay? So in this case, the cycle length is 16. So what is a good generator to begin? It should be efficiently computable. We are going to do millions of these things in your simulation, right? So you really don't want it to be very complicated formula. You don't want to have exponentiation, division, and anything like that, right? I mean, division is there, but that division by 16 is not really a division. Period should be large. You don't want them to be repeating every 10th number, same number coming back. And the successive values should be independent and informally distributed. Now, here's the interesting thing. We want them to be independent. How can they be independent? You're taking one number and computing other number. They are dependent, right? But statistically, they will pass the independence test, most of them. Actually, first, by the way, there's no independence test. But they will, when you try to do the correlation, it's very, very low. And so that's why they are independent. And then there should be a new form. That means between 0 and 1, and every value is likely. So then there are four kinds of generators. <clears throat> the most common kinds are called LCGs, linear congruential generators. And there are three other kinds, which we'll talk about later. But LCG is the one that I showed you a minute ago. 
and it was discovered first times published in 1951. And what he observed was that the residuals of successive powers of a number have good randomness properties. So he observed that if you take any number A and make it A raised to 1, A raised to 2, A raised to 3, A raised to 4, and then you divide by some M and take the remainder. Then he found those remainders look like have very good randomness property. So writing this that xn is equal to a raised to n mod m is same as writing that xn is equal to a times xn minus 1 mod m. So three they already showed you, right? And then we'll tell you more. But the three are, just remember these three. Efficient, large period, and uniformly distributed and independent, right? So these are two different things you can test. You can test how much is the correlation. If you have two random number generators, one has a correlation of 0 0.01 and one has a correlation of 0 0.001, you know which one is better, right? And uniformly distributed, there are tests for uniform, just like your, there is a test for QQ plot, you know, for the, normally you can do QQ plot for uniform, right? And see, you know, which one is closest to the line. Cycle is actually the period. Okay, so let's just define it again. The period is this. Yeah, but the periods generally are, you know, not that much actually. They are, like in our example, it was zero and that's not very uncommon. So yes, I mean, you, you, if you have, a, if you have a, if you have a generator where the tail is very large and the cycle is very small, that would be really bad. <laughs> Because once you reach that point, then you are repeating. So yes, so the your observation is correct. That if I were given a choice, I would rather have a large cycle than than the you know large tail. But generally, the period has to be much much bigger than what we need. So suppose we need a million number, we have to have period ten million. So we are not going to reuse any number again. And so these things have to be very large. All right, in this, A is called the multiplier and M is called the modulus. It turns out this was discovered first and then somebody said that let's add something. So, lemma choices were that, that, and he probably worked for um, IBM, I don't know, in those days, which was the biggest computer company, or, I mean, where were, but anyway, so he tries that you use a equal to 23 and m is equal to 10 raised to 8 plus 1. You see, the reason he selected m is equal to 10 raised to 8 plus 1 is because division by 10 raised to 8 plus 1 was very easy in that computer that he was working on. And it was probably a decimal computer, not a binary computer. Okay. And so this was his choice. And this was good for a this, this machine in Yak. I, so this was, I think, it's Pennsylvania or something. I forget where this machine was. This is 1951, by the way, right? So, so, so this is one of the early machines, and it was a decimal machine. And then somebody said, no, no, better thing is to just add a B. All right. And actually, on the top of that, they said M should be binary in the sense that you know, power of two rather than power of 10. So this was analyzed quite a bit, and now it means that it can be easily gen easily analyzed, and this is called mixed congruential generator, or LCG. The reason it is called mixed is because there is addition and multiplication. If there is no addition, then it is called multiplicative LCG. This is a mixed LCG because because we have addition and multiplication, and this is LCG because we are doing this linear congruential stuff, this mod stuff. And so, so basically, this is what is most general form. By the way, Kanut, all of you have heard of him, Knuth or Kanut, whatever you want to call him, he has a whole volume on this analysis of LCGs. So, this is one of the favorite pastime for mathematicians in those days. <laughs> and statisticians, you know, for, for example. Okay, so A, B, and N affect the period and autocorrelation. 
what is a b and n a was the multiplier b was the adding uh, the, the increment or whatever you want to add and n was the modulus right so a and, and b can affect the, the choice has to be very carefully done m should be large the period can never be more than m so that is one thing that your m should if m is small like 16 your period cannot be more than 16 right so m has to be large and um, for mod, for m computation to be efficient m should be a power of 2 so that you can do mod mod m if you have to do mod 2 ratio 32 it's very easy you just shift by that many bits then the next result is if b is non zero the maximum possible period is obtained if and only if so this is necessary and sufficient conditions coming up if and only if integer m and b are relatively prime what does relatively prime means they have no common factor common factor is only one maximum else what they call lcg list L, um, list common denominator is it a list list common multiple lcm um i think that is the other side i i mean the other way you know which is probably the maximum factor whatever that is you know <laughs> whatever right yeah that is one and then every prime number that is a factor of m is also a factor of a minus one all right integer m is a multiple of four if integer m is a multiple of four then a minus should be a multiple of four so there are how many conditions so far we have set we have set three conditions which is easy actually to remember a m and b should be relatively prime and every prime factor of m should be a factor of a minus one and if m is a multiple of four then a minus one should be multiple of four those are three conditions and notice that all these conditions are of met if m is equal to two raised to k a is equal to four c plus one and b is odd so if those things you do m is equal to two raised to k take any value of k two raised to 15 16 32 64 a minus 1 is a multiple of 4. A minus 1 should be multiple of 4. That means A should be 4 C plus 1 some for some value of C. And B should be odd. That means there is no common. If B is odd, then M and B will have no common factor. Because M is 2 raised to K and B is odd. So it's very easy to satisfy those three conditions. And um, so most of the uh, random number generators that we will see would be similar to this, like this one is an example. Xn is equal to 2 raised to 34 plus 1, Xn minus 1 plus 1 mod 2 raised to 35. So this is, this satisfies all those conditions. You see this is 4C plus 1. And this is odd. C. Oh, that is what I'm coming up. Basically, so the thing is, um, so here 4C plus 1, you are saying C is 2 raised to 32. Why did somebody select 4, 2 raised to 32 for C? There is another example here. Somebody else selected 2 raised to 18 plus 1, and so here 2 raised to 16 is C. Right? So, before you do, before I answer your question, let's just go over and then we'll come back later, okay? So lower autocorrelation between success number of reference. So now what you want to do is if you take these two, they will have the same full period because they both satisfy this condition. Those are necessary and sufficient, if and only if. So their period would be M. So both of them will have period what? 2 raised 35. All right. However, these are different generators, they have different statistical property, even though they have the same period, the first one has a correlation of 0 0.25. Would you like a generator which has a correlation of 0 0.25 between successive number 25 percent because they are not very independent, right? And the second one has a correlation of less than 2 raised to minus 18, that's the one we want. Right? So, just for the starters, not all full period generators are equally good. Yeah, so the conditions are not for independence. 
what the conditions are for the conditions are for they are just for the period they are not saying that that means is a good generator it means that one of the things for the good generators oh how do you find correlation oh that's very easy all you have to do is take a number the minus mean x minus xn minus mean times xn minus 1 times mean add up correlation between any two numbers you can any two sequences you can find like that right so that will give you the correlation between the successive numbers you can also find the correlation between numbers which are one apart so xn and xn minus 2 you can also find the correlation between xn and xn minus 3 there are lots of correlation you can find out but i think the generally the if the correlation with within previous one is very large then you reject right there if the previous one is tends to minus 18 then you go and see well what is with the next to previous one which is x x n and x n minus 2 right so you got to do lots of analysis before you can see whether it is a good generator or not now you know what the lcgs look like and these are real lcgs which you might use in your computers and um, so A special case is multiplicative one. In multiplicative one, b is zero, and the formula is this. And in this case, there are two different cases. One is that m is a power of two, and when m is not a power of two. If m is a power of two, then the maximum possible period for a multiplicative LCG is two raised to k minus two. All right. Now here's the thing: we are stating lots of facts without proof, and I am not going to do proof because that is mathematicians' pastime. I mean, you know, that's basically you know you have to read Knut. Okay, and we are really going to just use these things, these facts, rather than prove them because just knowing them is is big, big win. So if you have two raised to k. Then the maximum you can get is two raised to k minus two for a multiplicative one. For a mixed one, you can get total two raised to k. But for a multiplicative one, you get two raised to k minus two. And this period is achieved if multiplied a is of the form a i plus minus three. All right. That four c plus one has gone. Now here we are saying that a. Is of the form eight i plus minus three, and here is interesting. If the initial seed is odd, so if you select the wrong seed, you won't get this period. All right. So the condition for getting this two raised to k minus two is that you have to have i, which the designer would have taken care of it. But the user has to be careful too. The user has to select an odd seed. And it might be a good generator, you know, because one fourth may be not bad. I mean, one fourth of two raised to thirty-five is two raised to thirty-three. Who cares, right? That's big enough. So, so multiplicatives can be used. There are some problems. Other problems are that the low-order bits are are cyclic, and this is another thing to know. And that's why I'm teaching all this. Is if you take a random number. The whole number is random, not the bits. If you just take one bit, let's say you want to flip a coin, you may say, "Well, I will take the last bit and see whether it is odd or even." Right? That will give you totally non-random sequence. Okay? So we will we will actually show you actual example later on. So that's what we are saying. The, the low order bits, low order bits are not random. They have a cyclic pattern. All right. So let's look, look at this example. X n is equal to five times X n minus one mod two raised to five. Obviously, this is not the generator that you will ever use, but this is generator that you can easily analyze on your laptop, <laughs> right? So this is a twice generator, and if you use the seed of one, you get five, twenty-five, twenty-nine, thirty, and you get a five year. Your period is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is good because it is two raised to five divided by four. 32 by 4, so you have a period of 8, right? As we said, and this one, by the way, is 8i plus minus 3, so this is 8 times 1 minus 3. Okay, so that's why this is the maximum period. The maximum period is 2 raised to 3, 
and if you use x equal to 1, but if you use x 0 is equal to 2, then the sequence is 10, 18, 26, 2 again. So the period is 4. That's not a good seed. Yeah, no, all it is saying is that the A has to be like this, either 5 or 11 or 13 or 16 plus 3 is 19. I just some integer, yeah, you just, you know, so it has to be, so that the A is like that, in this case, 5, so uh, I equal to 1. I could have taken I equal to 0 and then gotten 3. Oh, no, 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 I'm saying, okay, no, 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 8 is not large, but for 2 raised to 5, that is the maximum you can get. You will not use 2 raised to 5, what will be using here, 2 raised to 35. Well, I mean, some big number you will be using. In that case, this would be, you know, one-fourth of that big number, and it's good. All right. Now, if the multiplier is not 8i plus minus 3, let's say 7, which is not this form, then if you put x0 is equal to 1, you get 7, 17, 1. Again, the period is not full period. All right. If the multiplier is not 2 raised to k, then there are some other properties people have figured out, and I will explain you those properties. If the period is not 2 raised to k, then if it is a prime number, if it is a prime number, then with some value of a, you can get period of m minus 1, which is really large. I mean, if you take very large prime number, m, and you use that, then you can get a period m minus 1. The maximum possible period is m, but I mean, like this is, if you are taking m is a prime number, then you know, this is how you get it. If and only if a is a primitive root of m. So this is the condition which is necessary and sufficient that a has to be primitive root of m. Now, for us engineers, what is a primitive root? <laughs> right? So the primitive root is defined as follows. A is a primitive root of m if and only if a raised to n mod n is not equal to 1 until you get to m minus 1. So, I will show you an example that will make it clear. Basically, so let's take the example. First of all, let's take the generator. The generator is a is equal to x is equal to 3 raised to x n minus 1 mod 31. So, here 31, by the way, is a prime number. Right? If we select the proper A, then we might be able to get a period of 30. Right? So let's try 3. We try 3 and start with 1. We go all the way here and we get 1 here, which I think looks like 31 numbers there. Okay? So this is good. Period is 30. Sorry, period is 30, not 31. 30 because 31 is the M. So, if you, if, if this happens, then you know that the 3 is a primitive root of 1. So, this is like a circular definition. How do you find that something is a primitive root? You just generate random numbers, and if you get that same number after M minus 1, then it's a primitive root. If you get it before, then it is not a primitive root. All right? You can try something else. For example, you can try 5. Put 5 there and take any value, a starting point, and you will see that this will not happen. For 31, people have done it for all numbers, and they found out that 3, 11, 12, 13, 17, 21, and 22, and 24 are primitive roots. So if I basically have to write a program that just does it, this basically x raised to n. Say let's see one prior 17 is a primitive root. It will do 17, 17 is square, 17 cube, 17, you know, so, so on and so forth. And then figure out if you get seven, whatever you started with back. Now, the interesting part in this one is that all this mathematics is very easy to do on a computer because there are no overflows because you, if you keep doing the mod every time. So when you do 17 is square, don't take that big number, 17 square divided by 31 to get a number which is less than 31. 
then and we get a cube multiply that number by 17 you get a bigger number bring it down to below 31 see if you bring it down to below 31 every time you will get the correct answer and you can continue forever without overflow so don't just write a simple program which says 17 raised to 300 and then your computer says sorry <laughs> here's a blue screen Right. So as long, so basically, if you did this, then you will find out these are the primitive roots. 